able abilities. We are here now. So uh, we want to start by going into core where are our templates I want to do able able ability blueprint of class able ability and we want to say that it's a b like ability or uh, usually you use um, GA which is gameplay ability but this is the naming convention for gas so I'll be using a different one I'll be doing a b for uh, the template abilities and I'll be just doing uh, a underscore like ability for other abilities um, okay yes save everything thank you and so I'm going to call it a b underscore um, fantasy ability template and I haven't touched able in a very long time so let's see what do we have here in store and we're going to say character okay and that's great and we want to say mm, Oh, preview asset, select fantasy uh, BP fantasy character. Okay, great. And our target is BP fantasy character as well. Oh, come on. Oh, I can't use the same class, or maybe he just spawned in the exact same location. No, eh, never mind. It's not as important. <coughs> What's important is here and here. This is editor settings. So we, oh, we got targeting. Okay, great. Uh... Okay, let's look here. So, draw targeting shapes, of course. Uh, requires target, depends on the ability. Target logic is depending on the ability. Ability length, cooldown, and other stuff is depending on the ability. This is depending on the ability. Is there something new? Oh, nice, there's max stack. Oh, automatic increment and decrement. That's great. Mm. Looping. Mm. Oh, nice. But instead of decay, you can make an ability uh, that is just passive. Mm. Oh, I think that decaying is the new uh, infinite uh, length passive, basically. Okay, there's channel and there's a tag container and instancing policy is default, that's great, clear type of policy, default, that's great. So there, this is the tag container, and I don't see tag container rules like you had in a uh, gameplay ability system, gas, which is absolutely amazing. It allows you to say that, hey, block abilities with this tag and cancel abilities with this tag, and it requires this tag to do something, and it was just... Uh, it's super useful like you can just use gameplay tags to say which abilities are uh, concurrent with other abilities and i don't see that here unfortunately uh, but we will manage let's go to the graph and there's some stuff we might want to do for absolutely every ability ever mm. 
And so let's do that. Let's go into override functions. And all of those are able ability functions. So nothing that is inherited from something that is useless for us. This is still using the old uh, damage system that I actually very much like. Okay, so can ability execute. We're going to have two rules for every ability that says that ability can execute or cannot. Uh, from here we can get owner, also get instigator, which is usually the same thing. We can get uh, um, ability component, get get self ability component which is also very important and in the context um, um, okay and here we can get tax uh, yes this one target is get gameplay tag container gameplay tag container of this uh, entire ability component we can also from it get active ability and we can get ability current passive abilities so we can access all abilities active and passive here we can access a gameplay tags that we have currently on the component and we can also add tag and we can remove tag right so you can do those two uh, actions as well <coughs> so first of all we're checking if we can run an ability right so we got all this information already that we can get from the owner. So from the owner, we know that the owner is a character for us, right? It's the fantasy character. And we already have those interface calls that say a lot of stuff, really. So we can, for example, uh, use the resource has enough stamina function directly on him. And when we call it directly on him, he will check his uh, component and say that he has or doesn't have stamina. And this can ability execute runs on both running client, but then it's being double checked on the server. So get all owner has enough stamina message. And if it is true, we can execute ability. Sort of. We're going to add one more uh, thing. But first we need to make a variable out of this. So the variable is stamina required, and that's actually how we want to name it. So stamina required um, is here. So now that we know that we have enough stamina and the ability can execute, then the ability executes. And when the ability executes, we're going to have to uh, do some stuff as well. For example, we're going to get owner from the context and we're going to say reduce stamina and we'll just try to reduce stamina by our stamina requirement right makes sense so when we start we are reducing the stamina uh, stamina that what we spent on the ability but we also want to uh, have certain dependencies and blockings between um, uh, between abilities that we could do based on gameplay tags but I don't think it is so much relevant right now uh, but we can always extend this function we can always extend this class so that's not really a problem let's go further <clears throat> uh, can client cancel ability that's going to be overwritten uh, based on ability but in general it says no this is the default so 
if client can cancel ability, uh, that means he can cancel a debuff, for example. And some abilities we want clients to be able to cancel, some we don't. So we're going to leave it like this. Mm. Uh. Okay, can interrupt ability. Uh, this is being called when you are trying to run a uh, active ability when you already have an active ability and this is checking if the new active ability has like higher priority so we could for example give priority of a float number or we could do priorities based on gameplay tags um, so you know what yeah let's do priorities let's do it like this let's make a variable let's call it priority uh, and let's do it this ability setup and let's move all of those into ability setup so priority is going to be an integer default value is priority one mm. You know what? Let's do five, and the lower you get, the better. Let's add a tooltip. They will lower the priority. The, uh, mm, higher chance of execution. Okay, and we can also say that slider range is one five, and value range is one five. You can always change it, but still, you can do it like this. And stamina requirement is stamina cost of ability. It gets deducted from stamina on execute. So it only happens when it properly executes. So any other can interrupt, uh, can ability execute, and everything just works. Only then it's getting re uh, reduced. Okay. Um, so we got this priority, and we can say context. So we have current ability, it is the ability that we have right now. So I don't have to go into owner, get component, get uh, active ability. Uh, we can just get the context of it. And to do that, we need ability interface. Mm. We need just a blueprint interface because those are objects and objects can implement interfaces. Uh, so blueprint interface underscore ability interface okay that's great and uh, we're going to say that yes uh, we want to implement this interface okay and we want to run this ability interface where is it here it is let's go here a new function is get priority and it returns priority and it's just an integer <coughs> okay mm. and we can like do more get functions for example we can say uh, we can say um, get cooldown and you can uh, or, or get uh, the time until the end of the ability and you can display it in UI because you can always query the ability that you have on the component and then you can just run functions, whatever you want and you can build them inside here however you want. So get priority, just this for now, this will be enough. And now we have interfaces, ability, get priority and we just want to do priority. So, um, can interrupt get priority message and then uh, we'll basically solve get priority so we can just call function on our self and if our priority is lower not equal but exactly lower then we are returning true if our uh, priority is greater or equal to the priority of the current ability, we will not interrupt it. Oh, error, why is that? I 
maybe we have to do it like this, like an interface call. Okay, that's stupid. I can just get <laughs> just get this variable, and this should work. So this is okay. This should work. Mm. Okay, so this is the can interrupt. Let's go further. What other ability? What other functions we might have to uh, override for everything? Mm. On collision, on custom, on spawned active reset, shoot cancel ability, call the cancelability task to do any custom logic to determine. Okay, so this is literally when someone is canceling ability. So the one that is already happening is can client cancel ability and uh, mm, we can actually make this a variable uh, client can cancel and default is false and it's ability setup <laughs> and obviously nothing has to be replicated because the client and the uh, uh, server they have their own version of the ability object that is being constructed at start and they are just using their version they never replicate the information between them the only method of replicating information between them is through scratchpad or through uh, custom value containers in abilities but we won't be able we, we won't have to use them at least for now we might want to use them later on let's close everything we have finished working on Mm, and I guess like those functions. Uh, so this is on startup and on ability and interrupted branched. Okay, we don't do anything else. So we got a template, and now based on this template, we can do any ability uh, build on top of it. And you can uh, make multiple child actors of childs. Uh, within here, so what we want to do is make a new folder, abilities, and for the abilities we want also some custom color. And this is more purple, it's more pinkish, I would say. So, okay, we got this. 